Hey folks, I'm Jen Foxbot, and welcome to Maker Quest. In this episode, we're going to learn about pressure. So, first of all, what is pressure, and how do we actually calculate it? Well, pressure is proportional to the amount of force applied perpendicular to the surface, and inversely proportional to the surface that the force is applied to. Okay, so there are some big words in there. What does that actually mean? Well, basically, if you increase the force, you increase the pressure, and if you increase the surface area, you decrease the pressure. So to demonstrate that, I'm going to take this hand cake slicer thingy and show you how that works. So first, I'm going to hit it with the flat part. Oh, well, that wasn't terribly exciting, so nothing really happened. And now I'm going to decrease the surface area, keeping the force about the same, and use this really thin part of the cake slicer. Ha! Much better. So I was able to dent the cup where the cake slicer hit the cup. So basically, using the same amount of force, I can increase the amount of pressure that I apply to the cup by reducing the surface area. All right, so what's the practical application of that? Well, one thing my high school physics teacher told us was that the reason why we weren't allowed to wear heels in school was because the stiletto heel would exert more pressure on the floor than an elephant's foot. And since, unfortunately, I can't get an elephant's foot, I'm going to use my boot to demonstrate. So elephant versus stiletto heel. So is she right? Well, let's run some calculations and figure it out. So first of all, what is the amount of force that I'm going to be exerting on the floor? So we can kind of just assume that that's due to gravity. So then in that case, the force would be equal to my mass times the acceleration due to gravity, or 9.8 meters per second squared. So let's assume that I'm about 60 kilograms, and let's round up the acceleration due to gravity to 10 meters per second squared to make it some nice even numbers. So then that means that I'm exerting about 600 newtons of force on the ground, just in general. So, okay, what about the amount of surface area? Since we're interested in the maximum amount of pressure, that means that as I'm walking, the smallest amount of surface area is going to happen when the heel is the only part touching the ground, or basically all of my weight, all of my force due to gravity is going to be exerted on this one tiny little part of the shoe. So we need to figure out how big that is. So we can measure that and find that the diameter of the circular heel is about 10 millimeters. So then we can use the uh, area of a circle, pi r squared, to calculate the amount of pressure. So that would be 60 newtons divided by pi times 5 millimeters squared, since uh, we want the radius, the diameter is 10, radius is 10 divided by 2, which is 5, and that'll give us about uh, 7,500,000 pascals, uh, since Pressure tends to come in fairly large units. We tend to use megapascals, which, uh, so that would be 7.5 megapascals, um, or 10 to the 6, so six zeros. All right, so that's the stiletto. What about the elephant? So if the elephant is walking through the school, the elephant is going to be exerting also a force of gravity on the ground. So what would that be? Well, we need to find the mass of an elephant. So when I did some research, I found that on the low end, elephants' uh, mass are about 3,000 kilograms. So to find the force of gravity, I multiply that about by 10 meters per second squared to get about 30,000 newtons. So already the elephant has a leg up on me. <laughs> Puns, so funny. Um, because the elephant is much, much, much larger than me and really any other human. So it's exerting way more force on the ground. But what about the pressure that the elephant is exerting? So obviously you can see that this, the bottom of this shoe is gonna be way bigger than the stiletto heel. And so an elephant's foot is about uh, 40 centimeters in diameter. Let's assume it's a circle. So then the radius would be 20 centimeters or 0.2 meters. So then the pressure exerted by the elephant's foot on the ground would be 30,000 newtons divided by pi times uh, 0.02, sorry, 0 0.2 meters squared, which would give me about 230,000 pascals or 0 0.23 pascals. So actually my physics teacher was totally right. If I were to walk through the school in, in stiletto heels, the pressure exerted by the heel would be more than the pressure exerted by an elephant's foot. Although I doubt my teachers would like an elephant walking through the school either, so go figure. 
All right, so I'll leave you with a question. Now that we understand a little bit more about pressure, what does that tell us about atmospheric pressure? So what is atmospheric pressure? And to answer last week's question, I asked, what are some other types of renewable energy technology? So there's actually a lot of different variations, um, and there are getting to be lots more uh, new novel ways to generate electricity from different renewable sources. But one of my favorites is thermoelectric generation. We're basically taking a temperature differential and using the heat flow to generate electricity. So it's a really cool way to generate electricity, especially for uh, low power applications or for remote applications or things that are way out there, kind of far away from any other uh, grid system. So let me know if you have any questions about that explanation or about pressure in general. Thank you for watching and please subscribe.